Hello again, wrestling fans, and welcome to another edition of the Good Friends Better Enemies Podcast. My name is Jay, and this week I am joined by our very dear, close, personal, longtime friend and friend of the show, frequent guest, Nick of the Universal Wrestling Podcast. Nick, how you doing, brother? Good, man. Good. Thanks for having me on again. I'm, I'm pretty stoked for this episode. It's going to be a... Uh... It's going to be a banger. I think so, too. I mean, we like to refer to the uh, really popular and uh, excitable events on this show as humdingers. And I think we have one on tap this week. There you go. Um, So, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for our first episode of 2022. And I just wanted to briefly run you through exactly what we're doing this week. It's a little bit different from what we typically offer you in terms of rebooking. This week, we're doing a fantasy Royal Rumble match in which Nick from the Universal Wrestling Podcast is going to be using more current day stars, uh, any performer that's been active within the last five years or so, whereas I am going to go back and turn back the hands of time and pick different legends and different Hall of Famers, and we're going to make what we're calling a Fantasy Royal Rumble match. So we're going to take turns here having entrance, and in fact, Nick, I've got a coin here, I'm going to flip it. You want to call heads or tails for whether or not you get entrant number one. Hey, let's go tails, brother. All right. I'm flipping right now. Come on. And it is tails. So you have come up as entrant number one. And we're going to be going back and forth in the spirit of that particular uh, vein, as well as going into the spirit of the Royal Rumble match itself. Uh, This should be a lot of fun. I think we're going to be having uh, some very interesting entrants. And the other thing about this, too is that we are going to try and come up with our own final fours here at the end, folks. So um, Nick is going to choose his his final four, and then I'm going to choose my final four based on the entrance that we have both uh, entered into this match. And then from there, we're going to book our finishes, and we're going to put up a Twitter poll later on once this episode drops, and you can choose who had the better Rumble match. Was it Nick? Was it the Universal Wrestling Podcast? Or was it yours truly, Jay of the Good Friends, Better Enemies podcast. How's that sound, Nick? Yeah, man, I'm stoked. Let's get it done, brother. I am too. I am too. We're going to stay away from the current day product and talk this week. I think we have a real good concept here on tap. So before we get into this, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to throw it to our good old personal longtime friend, Howard (laughs) Finkel, to introduce us to the rules of the Royal Rumble match. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the Fantasy Royal Rumble match. Here are the rules. In just a few moments, those individuals who drew number one and two respectively will enter the match and the match will begin. Every 90 seconds thereafter, another superstar will enter the match. Elimination occurs when a superstar is thrown over the top rope with both feet touching the floor. The last superstar remaining, after all 30 participants have entered the match, will go on to WrestleMania for a championship opportunity. And now, let's all find out who drew number one. Thank you very much, Fink. That was a great job. Always great to hear your voice and tell us all about all things Royal Rumble. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, dude. I love it. I love Howard Finkel. God rest his soul. You do him justice, though. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, with that all being said, I think that we should go with... Come on. Number one. Nick, you have entrant number one for the Fantasy Royal Rumble match. Who you got on top, man? Booyaka, Booyaka, 619, Rey Mysterio. In 2006, he didn't just win the Rumble. He also broke Chris Benoit's record and stayed in for an hour and two minutes. You got to have Rey Mysterio in a Rumble. So he's my number one entrance. I like it. I like it a lot. That is a great choice. So that's the, that's your choice. That's your reasoning for putting him in is because he won the 2006 Rumble. Well, I mean, just as, yeah, that that's going to help him for sure. He's really good in rumbles. He's the ultimate underdog. And I just, I don't know, I just love to watch him when the rumble comes around. And uh, it should be exciting this year with him and his, his son. I think they're getting into a few, but regardless, yes, this is one of, that is probably the main reason. I mean, 
He's so good in the rumble. He's small. You know how it is. When you're small, you can hide under the, you know, the ropes and you can, you're athletic. He's, 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 he's number one, brother. He's my number one. I like it. I think it's a great choice. Unfortunately, um, he has some stiff competition on the way because entrant number two of the Fantasy Royal Rumble is coming to us from Japan and he is weighing in at 641 pounds. We're talking about the mighty Yokozuna. Oh, shit. That's a good one. Look at it already. It's, it's something you could write, you know, for the next Rumble. Small, statured versus larger-than-life competitor. It's, it's awesome, dude. Yeah, I think that that, uh, that story tells itself. I mean, you're yep. going to have those guys. You know, obviously the story is the David and Goliath type match. Yeah. So, you know, for me, I think that that's a great way to get the Rumble match started, especially oh, with man. Yoko. I'm thinking more along the lines of him, maybe, you know, at the time when he won the Royal Rumble back in 93, he was moving around like a cat. So yeah. to have that Yoko go up against Rey Mysterio would have been a real hell of a match. I would have loved to have seen, you know, Yoko yeah. land that big leg drop on Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Now, what are they doing right now? Are they Is this like a feeling out process or are they, you know, going one on one right now? I feel like they're going one on one right now. I think Rey Mysterio is bumping all over the world for him. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he maybe tried a little bit of aerial offense. Maybe he's even trying a uh, a six one nine at this point. Yeah, yeah. So, with that being said, Nick, who is coming in in the ninety second interval since Yokozuna made his debut? Yes, sir. It is Brian Danielson, aka Daniel Bryan, number three entrance in the uh, in the Royal Rumble. Now, it's it's going to be interesting to see how him, Yoko, and, or Yoka, excuse me, Yoku, Jesus, Yokozuna, and Rey Mysterio um, fight it out. Because as of right now, you would think maybe Brian is a, a face or a heel, and Rey's definitely a face. Yokozuna, what do you think, Jay? Is he a heel right now? Who, Daniel Bryan? No, Yoko. Oh, I think Yoko's a heel for sure. He's got to be. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like there's two faces against one big, larger than life competitor. And you know what happens in a rumble when it's a large guy like uh, Yoko, like Big Show, like Mark Henry. They're going to go, you know, one on one, or uh, it's going to be a handicap map, match, basically. So, yep, that's what I see right now. I see Danielson and Ray teaming up together and trying to get Yoko out, but obviously it's not going to happen. Yeah, I think that that's all great psychology. I like that a lot. Um, it makes a lot of sense. I could totally see Rey Mysterio and Daniel Bryan trying to team up. I mean, it's the oldest story in Rumble history. You always have the guys yeah. come and uh, gather to try to throw out some of the larger athletes. Yeah. So and I could cool, see that. What's cool about... Oh, my bad. No, go ahead. What's cool, what's cool about this is they're both... Daniel or Brian Danielson and Rey Mysterio are both known as the ultimate underdog. So I don't know if we would ever see this. Maybe we'll never see this, but having them two in the ring together is pretty cool to see. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. Um, and I'm just curious as to what your take is on entrant number four, because as that clock, clock is uh, coming to the 10 second countdown, we have yeah. possibly some help coming to uh, aid Rey Mysterio and Daniel Bryan. Because as the buzzer goes off, we have the King of Hearts, Owen Hart, on tap. Oh, Owen Hart. Okay. Man, this rumble is getting better and better every second. Um, this is this is going to be interesting. you got a lot of technical wrestlers. Yeah, maybe Ray's not as technical as Danielson or Owen Hart. But, again, this is something that we will never see, and that's for sure. We will never see this. So it, it's cool to fantasy book. What do you got, uh, Owen what is he up to right now? Well, you know, I kind of feel like uh, Owen was always his best as a heel. And, of course, yeah. you know, we have former tag team champions in Owen and Yoko. So I kind of yeah. like the idea of Owen coming in, maybe swerving Daniel Bryan, making him think that uh, he's going to be going in to help him uh, eliminate yeah. Yoko. Daniel Bryan turns his back, and boom, Owen hits a spinning heel kick. Maybe it ends a great array Mysterio. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I don't know if we're going to get an elimination quite this early. But I think Owen yeah. and Yoko are drawing battle lines here. Yeah, yeah, I can see that too. Um, I, I feel like Danielson and uh, Ray are, you know, they're not really uh, teaming up anymore. I feel like they're battling since there's five or four uh, 
uh, competitors in the ring right now. So I see a little back and forth with Danielson. And of course, we're going to get Owen Hart one on one with Danielson soon. But uh, I think the clock's ticking there, Jay. What do you think? Yeah, I think so too. The clock is ticking. We're at about eight seconds away from our next entrant. It, the buzzer is just about to go off. And it is your number five. Who do you have coming in in the yep. Fantasy Royal Rumble? Now, I had to take advantage of this. You said active in the last five years. This guy's been active in the last week. It's Sting! I got Sting coming in, brother, at number five. Sting! Very interesting. I like it. I I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I see him teaming up with Yoko. I feel like uh, he didn't really cross paths with Owen Hart as much as you would think. So I got him and uh, Yoko teaming up, trying to get some of this dead weight out of the ring with Ray and uh, Owen or, uh, and Danielson. Very interesting. I, I That's a name I wasn't expecting to hear tonight. I am very excited to hear that he is a uh, entrant in this year's Royal Rumble, the Fantasy Royal Rumble. So which sting are we getting here? Are we getting Crow Sting? Are we getting Surfer Sting? I feel like it needs to be Crow Sting. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like WWE or AEW. It's definitely Crow Sting fighting NWO on his own. Yeah, no doubt about it. Love it. I love it. And I could totally see him and maybe Mysterio forming an alliance. Uh, yeah. Yes. Going up against yes. Owen and Yoko type thing. I'm totally into yes. it. Um, Again, just for a sidebar here, folks, we'll we're not never... going to be. Sorry, go ahead, Nick. My God, go ahead. You're good. No, I was just going to say that we're not going to be talking about eliminations much, folks. It just becomes a little bit too confusing when we start eliminating competitors. So yeah. by the time we get to the end of the Rumble match, once we've announced all of our participants, that means that uh, at that point, we are just going to fast forward to each of our own uh, yep. final fours as discussed earlier. And then from there, we're going to book each of our finishes to the match. And you're, you're going to decide for us which Rumble match comes out on top. But with that being said, I believe that clock is ticking again. We're coming down to the nitty gritty. It's nut cutting time for entrance number six. And as the buzzer goes off, we see the great Haku make his entrance Haku. into the okay. Royal Rumble match. Yes, indeed. Okay, that's a twist. That's a yep. good one, man. I love it. I think Haku coming in, making an impact. Yeah. One of the toughest guys in the history of wrestling for a shoot. Him coming in and, uh, you know, throwing some of those Savat kicks. I could yep. see him maybe going after um, Rey Mysterio. Oh, I could right. see okay. him him maybe uh, teaming up with Yoko. There's a little bit of a similar lineage and history there. Uh, Haku, I think, would be a dangerous, dangerous yeah. man in this Royal Rumble. Yeah, I could see Haku going one-on-one with uh, Danielson. Hard-hitting action. As if you watch recent W or AEW, you've seen another, uh, a different type of Daniel Bryan. So I feel like that would uh, match pretty well with Haku right now, you know, with the, the heavy hitting. Absolutely. I like that a lot. And we're not talking about necessarily King Haku either, and, or uh, even, you know, Colossal Connection Haku. I'm just thinking, you know, like 19, maybe 1989, late, late 88 Haku. He's just a savage uh, coming yeah. in to, uh, you know, take out kick ass and take names um yep. and he is ready to to make an impact here uh we have the clock ticking again here folks about 90 second interval uh and once again we're coming down to about 10 seconds here until number seven emerges two three four five six yeah number seven is on on yep. route to the ring and nick yes, who sir. is number seven in the fantasy royal rumble yes unlucky number seven goes to seth freaking rollins like it like it a yeah. lot yeah yeah it, it, as much as i i think he's a great competitor and he's probably going to be a hall of famer sometimes you know in the near future i think he deserves to be on this because we were talking about how far back maybe five years and i feel like these five years have been really good for seth rollins even though he was out for a little with COVID and having his you know and having a baby so He's been kicking ass. I love what he's doing now, teaming up with KO and going one-on-one with Big E, and he's in the spotlight for the main event. So I dig that. I think this is going to be – I mean, just look at the names. You got Ray, you got Seth, you got Danielson, you got Sting, you got Haku. I mean, anything could happen. This is, again, fantasy. This will be amazing to see live. 
Yeah, I don't think like I mean this really would be the greatest Royal Rumble match ever. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah. I mean, I love that you have Seth in there, especially you know we have some uh, really really great talent in the ring as is. But of course, yep. having Seth go in and do his requisite style, you know, really compliments a Daniel Bryan, compliments a Rey Mysterio, compliments an Owen Hart. I mean, imagine a Seth yeah. Rollins Owen Hart match. Holy Jeez. cow! Yeah, we could do an episode on just that. Yeah, a hundred percent. Hundred <laughs> percent. So I can see him going, you know, burning it down in the ring right now, maybe yep. exchanging headbutts with Seth Rollins. But as that yeah. happens, you know, that clock is starting to tick again, man. I can hear it coming down to, you know, five, four, three, two, one. That buzzer just hits. And number eight in the fantasy Royal Rumble match, the ground is shaking, the ground is rumbling. It is earthquake. Nice. There we go. Another big guy coming in. Mm-hmm. Earthquake is going to make an impact. I could see him coming in. You know, again, I like the idea. Yeah. You have some bigger guys in here. Right now you have Earthquake, you have Yoko. Those are obviously the two biggest guys. But I wouldn't mind seeing maybe a little bit of interaction between Sting and Earthquake. I think that might be fun. Yeah, that would be interesting. It's cool to it's cool to think about like legends that were never able to get it on in the ring. And I'm not sure I'm not like a historian, but I don't think that's happened. And if it did, then I missed that. But yeah, legends like Sting and Haku and you know uh, Ray, he's uh, it's it just would be really cool to see. Yeah, it absolutely would be cool to see. I don't know. It might have happened at some point in WCW when Earthquake yeah. was wrestling a shark or something like that. But uh, I don't recall off the top of my head whether or not he faced Sting. It's a fun idea, though, for a match. And, you know, yeah. we're start the ring's starting to fill up. Uh, again, yeah. folks, we're not going to talk about eliminations here. Just assume that probably some people have been eliminated by now. It's just too complicated for us to try to coordinate when we're doing, you know, surprises uh, off, off of each other's uh, entrance to book yeah. an elimination match. So we're going to get back to the final four as discussed. But with that being said, you know, that clock is ticking again. I think we are, we're at uh, entrant number nine and number nine yes. to me, you know, the clock is ticking right down. We just hit the buzzer. Who is yeah. number nine in the fantasy Royal rumble match? Yep. I don't know if you'll ever see him in a legitimate Royal rumble, um, but I'm going with Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay. Wow. Very, yes, very sir. surprising. Yes, sir. I just watched the match with Okada. Holy shit, did they turn out, tear down the house. So I had to put him on the list. I only had 15, so he made my list. This, this would be amazing to see him versus any single person in the ring right now, from Ray to Sting to even Haku, dude, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. I I couldn't agree more. I think that that's a lot of fun. That is a great yeah. choice. I mean, I can just imagine the work rate going on right there. You know, him oh and Rollins God, going at yeah. it back and forth. You know, yep. maybe taking a stinger splash there as well. So that's a lot of yeah. fun to imagine him being in that match. Yeah, yeah. Rings uh, rings getting full here, Jay. Okay, well, you know, it's going to probably get a little bit more full as we speak because entrance entrant number 10 is on tap. And as we count down that 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, we hear that all-so-familiar music. We see the chewing gum. We see the towel. Miss, Mr. Uh -oh. Perfect is making his way to the ring right now. Nice, nice. Mr. Perfect. Didn't really get to watch much of him. I'm 31. He was in his prime when I was, you know, little boy but uh yeah again the legends that are in this ring right now like you said earlier this is the greatest Royal rumble you know 100 percent. i mean mr perfect coming in at number 10 and of course him and osprey back to back i think that's a lot of fun that's a great yeah. idea for a, a potential storyline down the road you know i could even see perfect hitting that perfect plex uh right there on seth rollins yeah, you know we're going to see a lot of intergen or sorry intergenerational matches matchups here in this particular uh, yeah. Royal Rumble, obviously. So I think it's a lot of fun to to to, to imagine that Mister Perfect is hitting it hard with some of these younger talents. I think would be a lot of fun to to imagine. Yeah, it would be. It would be cool to see how their you know the skill sets from someone like Seth Rollins how that would transition to a, a you know a match with Mister Perfect. Or a rumble match, just in general, it would be 
it's cool. It's cool to fantasy book. I said that a lot. I'm going to keep on saying it. It's yeah, just, man. it's cool to see guys like Danielson. I keep on saying C, but to imagine Danielson, Hart, Sting, and then Mr. Perfect comes in. Shucky ducky quack quack, my friend. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, but I'm just curious because that clock, once again, that crazy clock keeps ticking. And yeah. we're at about 10 seconds now removed from entrance number go. 11. Um, very interested to see who you have on tap for an entrance number 11 of the Fantasy yeah. Royal Rumble. <clears throat> Your voices, Randy Orton has entered the Rumble and he's coming on down and he's staring at Mr. Perfect. I love it. I love the idea of Orton being in this. How could you have a Royal Rumble without Randy Orton? Exactly. Exactly. And we, before this, we discussed like maybe we should do the years, like the best of Randy Orton. And I was thinking, you know what? There's so many years that he was just on point. I mean, even in 2020, I think that might be one of his best years. So this is interesting to see what he's going to do, who he's going to team up with. But uh, just thinking about Osprey and Randy in the same ring, dude, gives me goosebumps. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I'm right there with you on that. Randy Orton, the Viper, the apex predator, making himself uh, very much inserted into this match, making his presence felt. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we just saw one of those second row of DDTs on Owen Hart <laughs> from from Randy Orton. And man, that was devastating. Owen is selling. He just rolled underneath the bottom rope. And it seems like he is uh, clearing the cobwebs out there at ringside. Uh, there what a go, crazy Jimmy. match this is so far, eh? Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 entertaining. We got Jim Ross over there with Jerry the King Lawler. We're fantasy booking the commentators, too. They're coming 100%. back to me. 100%. It's a four-man booth. It's Jerry Lawler. It's uh, <laughs> it's Jim Ross. It's Gorilla Monsoon. And it's Bobby Heat or Bobby Heenan. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Four-man That's, booth. Love it. Yes, sir. Just All imagine right, the sir. wisecracks between Lawler and Heenan. They're just, they're just cracking each other up the whole night. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That would be fun to listen to. Joe, I can hear that. Uh, I can hear that clock a ticking, though, again, man. I can hear the, the countdown coming. 10, 9, 8. It's all on the way, and our entrant, number 11, is another snake. I think he is Jake 12, Jake. the Snake Roberts. Nice, nice. I think Jake's number 12, my friend. He is. Did I say something yes. different? Sorry. Yeah, you said 11. It's all good. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, it is. Jake is number 12. He is in this particular uh, match very interesting to note as well jake roberts made his return to the federation in 1996 which was wrestlemania 12 the year of it so inter yes. interesting that he is entrant number 12 and him yeah. and randy orton are going at it right now it's the battle of the vipers oh god i was just about to say if that's not the first person he punches in the face then i don't know who is that would be something cool to see him in his prime going one-on-one -on -one with the apex predator it would be uh so fun to just book that for a year you know 100 percent. i am very excited for uh that part that prospect i feel like there are so many different uh, again we've already said this a few times but so many different matchups that are that are possibly you know happening at this point we're setting up for the road to wrestlemania obviously maybe the ultimate wrestlemania Maybe this is something we go into uh, for Mania season, man. Maybe we book the Ultimate WrestleMania card this year just for fun. But right yeah. now, we are still in the depths of the Fantasy Royal Rumble, the first ever book by the Good Friends Better Enemies podcast, as well as the Universal Wrestling podcast, a joint venture, a co-branded event this week live. Well, not live, but let's pretend it's live <laughs> right now happening yeah. in the ring. We have another countdown on its way ladies and gentlemen as we are counting down to five four three two and the next entrant in the royal rumble fantasy matchup is whoa 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 is that our truth with a ladder truth truth it's the rumble it's not the money in the bank come on man okay our truth okay. Yes. i yes, wouldn't have know. called that no, 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 no. He's not in the Rumble. He thinks it's the money in the bank. The actual number 13 is your boy, Chris Jericho. I had to put something in there. I love it. I love it. You faked me out, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, he's coming out with a ladder. You know how he does that. He does that kind of comedy shtick. So thought I would add that to the rumble. No, it's Chris Jericho, number 13. That is a lot of fun. I like that a lot. Uh, I think that that is a great choice. Um, yeah. You know, of course, which Jericho are we getting here? Do we have a particular, you know, iteration of Jericho that you want to have in there? Is it Le Champion? Is it, you know, no, who is it? Oh, no. It's it's the suit heel Jericho. One of my favorite characters. My favorite version of Jericho ever. And I'm right there yeah. with you. you. got the spiky hair. He's got the trunks. <laughs> he's coming in. He's, you know, kicking ass, taking names. Code breaker, code breaker. Well, Osprey yep. just ate a code breaker. Ooh, Osprey. That might have eliminated Osprey. He might be out. Oh, shit. Come on, Osprey. Yeah. You learn how to take a code breaker, man. You're on the Indies. Yeah. 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 So, Jericho, Jake, Randy, I mean, Earthquake, the legends in this ring right now, tearing down the house. And it's, uh, I'm, I'm pretty interested to uh, see who's coming out next. 100%. And we have that clock coming. We have the clocks ticking down, down to the last few seconds. The buzzer just goes off. And ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, Evil Doink the Clown. Doink. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. Now, I'm not you talking about, you know, Doink yeah. the Clown when he was teaming with Dink and he was, you know, spraying kids with water and, and being a <laughs> face. I'm talking about this evil son of a bitch, Doink. The guy that could have yeah. main evented WrestleMania doink. That's the doink I'm talking about. The one that you were legitimately petrified of. You would you would yeah. lose sleep. You'd have nightmares over this guy. He was creepy as hell. And he is here to make an impact and to disturb the dreams of the rest of the competitors in this match. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love evil doink. Um, I didn't watch much of him, but... The way you're describing it, it's like, okay, this is something I can see, you know, if that could uh, that could happen nowadays. I feel like we need something like that. So, sort of like a Bray character, but more like you were describing, like Evil Doink. Yeah, that would be fun to see. It would be fun to see him go one-on-one with Ray or Danielson, you know, that small stature of a, of a wrestler. I would love to see something like that. Yeah, even a, even a Sting. Even a Stinger, I yeah. can see him going after. He's such a sadistic yeah. son of a bitch. You never know what's going on behind those eyes, but you know it's yeah. evil. So yep. I feel like That's he's making a love. great impact here. He's playing his parlor tricks, you know, shaking hands with a fake hand that's snapping off of his, uh, off of his wrist. He's hitting people with, uh, with confetti-filled uh, uh, you know, water buckets yeah. and all the rest of it. He's playing all of his tricks, but he's also got some evil intentions going after some of the superstars in this particular match. Yeah, yeah, starting to heat up. It is starting to heat up. And what else is heating up is the clock, because we got another entrance on his way right now. And uh, as the clock starts to tick down, Nick, I feel like we're almost at the halfway point here. Who do you have as the next entrant in the Fantasy yeah. Royal Rumble, man? Yeah, I'm uh, pulling out some of my uh, heavy hitters here. So I'm going with AJ Styles. AJ Styles is entrant number 15. I yes, love it. And yep. I think, I feel like, you know what, man? You, uh, you booking him at this point makes a ton of sense. A lot of times yeah. in the Royal Rumble matches, we get to a point where things start to get slowed down. The pace slows down a bit, especially if some of the guys have been in the ring for a bit. So yeah. to have him come out and pick up the pace, great yeah. choice. I love it. Yeah, he's going to cut some of the fat here. Sting, Haku, maybe uh, Jake the Snake. I feel like this is a, more of a younger game now. You got people like uh, Osprey, Rollins, um, even Jericho in his uh, suit days. Uh, so it, it's heating up, man. I'm stoked. I, I, I need to know who's number 16. Well, 16 is on his way out in just a few moments. And okay. uh, I got to tell you, like we, we, we have some real heavy hitters in this match. It's been going on for a while now. It's we're at the halfway point. Entrant number 16, that familiar theme song hits and the dream match is about to take place. AJ Styles is about to be face to face with the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Oh, shit. HBK himself coming in at number 16. HB couldn't had, Sizzle. Yep, you couldn't have wrote it any better than that. AJ coming out, and then Shawn Michaels. That is a dream match every wrestling fan has been thinking about for years. Um, 
it's happening right now on the Better Enemies or Best Jesus Better Friends, the Good Friends, Better Enemies podcast, and the Universal Wrestling <laughs> podcast. Our joint yes. venture. It's like Raw and SmackDown, a co-branded Royal Rumble yes. fantasy matchup this week. Thank you. <laughs> you got it, man. I am yeah. psyched. I'm having a blast right now. This is a lot of fun to imagine this match going on as it is. You know, yeah. Shawn Michaels right now is doing his thing. He's warming up the band. He's hitting super kicks like, you know, like I eat potato chips. He's going back and forth. He's nailing everybody mm-hmm. with a sweet chin music. AJ Styles is up, perched, ready to hit that uh, ready to hit that, uh, that phenomenal forearm. We're really, really close to getting a couple of eliminations here. We have HBK and AJ just squared off. They're paired off together as well. A couple of hard right hands to AJ from Shawn Michaels up in the corner. And as that happens, we have the clock coming. The buzzer's just hit. Who is entrant number 17, my friend? Cowboy shit. The AEW champion himself, Hangman Adam Page, has made the entrance down the ramp and he's coming in and he's looking at HPK. He's looking at Jericho and it's uh it's it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait to see some of those uh clotheslines. Yeah, I love that as well. I think that that's a lot of fun. Uh Adam Page is another guy I wasn't expecting to hear his name tonight. So I like the idea of him coming out and making an impact. Uh he yep. is definitely going to come on out, uh hit some yep. of those uh hit some of those clotheslines. Like you said, cowboy shit. He's going to yep. be going after Larry's. a guy like Jake. Yeah, man. So who do you see Hangman going after first here? I mean, it's got to be Brian Danielson after they tore down the house uh, this week. They, they're looking at each other. Danielson knows that he doesn't have another chance. And Hangman's like, you know, you know, looking at him like, yo, I just kicked your ass that once. Well, I mean... He did just kick his ass twice. So, yeah, Hangman's uh, going at it with uh, Danielson. I like it. I like it. As the clock continues to count down, we are going towards our next entrant. If I'm not mistaken, Nick, is this entrant 18? Yes, sir. Entrant 18 is on his way to the ring. The buzzer just struck. The glass just smashed. And Stone Cold Steve Austin is on his way to the ring. Uh, oh man, just I can just imagine so many matches with him and just just him with the Rumble. I mean, it's so historic when it comes to Stone Cold. I mean, he's the only one that has won three, so he's kicking ass right now. The crowd is, you know, the crowd just popped. They haven't heard that glass break in years. He's coming out, he's drinking some Budweiser's, and he's uh enjoying his time. He's hitting stunners left, right, and center. He just threw Adam Page a cold one. They just cheers. Nice. Throwing back a couple of sips of, of Steve Weiser, and then wham! Hangman Page just got stunned out of his boots. Yes, sir. I love it. I dig it. The old Attitude Era Austin Swerve. DTA, some bitch. Don't trust yes. anybody. We got Steve Austin hitting stunners, and now he's paired off in the corner with... Uh, with Hangman Page, he's he's laying the boots to him. He is uh, stomping a mud hole and walking it dry. <laughs> As nice. we cruise towards entrant number nineteen, man, I am very curious to see who you got next. As the clock yep. strikes on the next entrant in the Fantasy Royal Rumble, the Rated R Superstar Edge. Edge, what do you think, Jay? What do you think? I I love it. I think it makes a ton yeah. of sense to have a minute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's been active last past, you know, week. So I got him on my side, Edge, as number 19. And he's look at looking at some of his foes that he hasn't been able to, uh, you know, wrestle since they're in the other company right now. Somebody like uh, uh, Jericho, Jake, the other company as an AEW Sting. He's looking at Danielson. I mean, this is uh, this is really cool to see or to imagine. Yeah, I 100% agree. I mean, to think of Edge in this match makes so much sense to me. I love the idea of him being in this. I love the idea of him coming out, uh, hitting spears. You know, I feel like this is kind of a theme in this match, just based on the nature of the people in it, is that you're going to have people come in and kind of get their spot. You know, we just had Austin hit a bunch of stunners. Michaels was hitting super kicks. We had uh, Adam Page hitting uh, hitting those clotheslines. 
and now Edge, I think, is going to be hitting a few spears here and there. And then, of course, I think eventually he pairs off with someone else. Yeah. You know, who yeah. do you see him pairing off with in this mix, man? Yeah, I think one day we'll see it. Um, I, I would love to see Edge and uh, uh, Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson go one on one. I don't know if, you know, maybe we'll see it in some near future, but as of right now, we're fantasy booking and we're watching it as we speak. 100%. And I'm very excited for it. Uh, but as yeah. we are talking all about that, we do have the clock striking, uh, the hitting the buzzer after a 90 second interval once again. And I got to tell you, man, we have a pretty heavy hitting guy on his way to the ring right now. The beast yeah. from the east, Bam Bam Bigelow, is making his way down. Nice. Nice. I was always a big fan of Bam Bam just because he uh, worked out in Jersey, I think, at the Monster Factory. And he's, you know. ECW um, near Philadelphia. So it was always cool to root for him wherever he was. So yeah, this is cool to see him in, uh, num- in the number 20 spot. Yeah, I think so too. I don't really see him coming in and necessarily, you know, running rough shot. I feel like he's going to come in and just kind of, maybe yeah. there's somebody that's teetering on elimination right now. There's a couple of guys yeah. that are maybe trying to work on Yoko or work on earthquake. Maybe Bam Bam comes in, tries to help yeah. out with that. Maybe he hits a standing in Zaguri on someone. I mean, there's a lot of different options with Bam Bam, but I don't see him coming in and like running rough shot like Austin hitting stunners. I think he's he's coming in to help clear the mess out a bit. Yep, I can see that. That makes a lot of sense there, brother. Yeah, man. So, you know, I just feel like we're we're having such a great time with this this match. You know, we're down to the last ten. Yeah, uh, I guess I guess technically the last nine now because we just got Bam Bam uh, in the ring. Yeah, twenty one. So. We got, traditionally speaking, in Rumble matches, you start getting some pretty big names in the last 10 or so. I'm very yep. curious, who do you have as number 21 as the clock just hit zero and the buzzer goes off? Yeah, he might not be a big name in the United States, but he's a huge name in Japan. I had to go with Okada. He is number 21. Okay. I am okay with that. I think that that's a yeah. great choice. Again, Another guy I was not expecting to hear. Yeah, yeah. I just see him coming in. Uh, he's just looking around. He's not familiar with a lot of these names in the ring. He sees Will Ospreay over there. And, you know, they just had a kick-ass match uh, on the 5th. So I see him going one-on-one with uh, Ospreay for a little. Then uh, I would love to see something like Danielson or if Ray's still in the ring or somebody like Randy. I, I would I would pay to see Okada go one-on-one with Randy or uh, Little Ray Ray. Yeah, no, I think that those are great choices. I like that a lot. I can definitely see uh, Okada making a difference. You know, he's got just a cool style as well. It would complement an EJ yeah. for sure, as well as a oh, Jericho or, or a Rollins. Yep. So, I mean, with that being said, you know, he's coming in. He's making a difference as well. He's hitting people with all sorts of offense. We also have the buzzer coming down once again for entrant number 22, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. as the buzzer hits and the clock strikes zero, we hear that familiar guitar riff. Ladies and gentlemen, the excellence of execution, Brett. Hitman Hart is making his way to the ring. Damn, he's going to be a tough one to beat. He's, this is good, man. It's heating up, like you said. The heavy hitters are coming out. Got Brett Hart pairing off with Okada here. It kind of reminds me of maybe like a Brett Tiger mask type situation. I like this yeah. a lot. I think Brett and Okada would be working. This would be a clinic if these two guys went into the ring together. Oh, my God. I mean, you could sit down and name every single guy and it would be entertaining, even from someone like Evil Doink. But what I'm thinking right now is Brian Danielson and Brett the Man Hart getting at it right now, dude. I can just only imagine. Yeah, 100%. I am so with you. I think that that would just be the funnest uh, exhibition. I mean, those two going at it. I mean, give me an Iron Man match with those two or, you know, a submission match. I want to see that match. I want to see Bret Hart, you know, take one of those flying uh, flying knees from Danielson. I want to see Danielson take the figure four around the ring post. I want to see it all, man. That's a match I want to see. Yeah, well, just let's list some of the names. Randy? Going on in one on one with Brett. I mean, come on, Edge, Brett, AJ Styles, Brett. I mean, even Ray. I would love to see Jericho. Well, Osprey. I mean, there's yeah, Osprey, even Okada. Jeez, anyone, man. I mean, 
he could go one on one with any person in this ring right now and tear down the house. And that's what we're doing here right now. Number 22 as Bret Hart. Come on. Yeah, 100 percent. And, you know, so as Bret Hart is throwing those uh, those incredible punches that he used to throw in the prime of his career, he's taking it to Okada right now in the corner. I mean, I got to feel like there's somebody big around the corner for for number 23 as the clock strikes. Who do you have for number 23, man? I got Mr. Brock Lesnar. I knew he was on his way. That's awesome. I'm yes, so glad sir. he's finally here. I wasn't sure yeah. when you're going to have him, but. Yeah, he's, he's coming down right now. Paul Heyman just said what he had to say. Now he's going back into the uh, to the backstage. So uh, I see Brock just killing it, like nonstop. Kind of like Stone Cold back in the day where he just entered the ring and just stunner, stunner, stunner. Mud stomp, mud stomp. I just see him not like looking around or not like feeling, you know, looking at people and maybe walking around the ring. I feel like he's jumping in, hitting Sting, hitting Owens, hitting uh, Earthquake. I I would love to see him again, Brock against any one of these guys in this ring. Somebody like a hangman or even Stone Cold. I mean, that would be cool if, you know, if they wrote it right and Stone Cold, you know, didn't take his ball and go home. I could see that. I love it. I think that that's such a great choice, and I'm so happy that that Brock's finally in the match. I mean, Brock would be throwing guys left, right. I feel like at this yeah. point where we're getting down to like the real, you know, everybody has a uh, different Mount Rushmore, but I feel like we're getting down to the Mount Rushmore, you know, candidates in terms of the mat, the guys in the ring right now. You're probably going to have a Brett. You're going to have a Lesnar. Yeah. You're going to have a an Austin, an Edge, Styles. a Jericho. Pardon? Yep. Styles. Oh, yeah, Styles is still in there for sure. And I got to tell you, like, Brock Lesnar, probably right now at this point, being as fresh as he is, is likely the odds-on favorite. But I got to say, I think that maybe there might be a roadblock on the way down the aisle right now because the next guy coming down, which is entrant number 23 or 24, is it 24? 24. 24 is on his way down to the ring. The buzzer just struck. And a match that I've always wanted to see and in their prime would have been a shit show in a good way. Ladies and gentlemen, next up, the man they call Vader is on the way to the ring. Damn, that's a good one. That's a name I didn't think I was going to hear tonight. The man they call Vader going up against Brock Lesnar. And these two are just throwing bombs. Yeah. Yeah, I can just imagine it now, man. Everybody like talking out. You know how they do it when uh, somebody comes in, they get their own little, um, you know, a little five second heat there where they they kick and punch and do their you know signature moves. They get it. They get everything in basically. And I can see Brock and Vader just staring down at each other, and then out of nowhere, um, getting at it. So yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, in a lot of ways, Vader is was what Brock Lesnar became in terms of the way he dominated the Federation for the first year he was in. Um, yeah. You know, they're both around the same height. Maybe Vader has an inch or two on him. Uh, and just just some pure athletes, pure beasts. So I just think that that yeah. match, that match, you know, these two guys pairing off. Again, we've talked a lot tonight about pairing off, but I feel like these two guys, this is like a match made in heaven. This is a WrestleMania match if there ever was one in my mind. Man, man, I would buy tickets ASAP for that. <laughs> 100%. So, you know, Vader and Brock are now paired off. They're, they're beating the tar out of each other. And as we come into entrant number 25, man, like, who do you got for me? Yeah, I got Kenny Omega. You're talking about somebody that's kicked ass in the past five years. I would even say the last 10 years. He had to be on my list. So he's coming out at number 25. Yeah, 100%. I like that a lot. So we have Kenny Omega coming in, making a difference. He's number 25, if I'm not mistaken. And he yep. is coming in. Uh, he's probably going to... Who think he's? Who do you think he's going to go after first? Do you see it maybe as like a Shawn Michaels? No, I see some of his old friends and his old feuds. You know, I think he's staring at Okada. He's looking at Will Ospreay and saying, you know what, thanks for, uh, you know, keeping uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling as good as it was when I was there, I could see him looking at somebody like uh, like Edge, like Stone Cold. I mean, come on, that that's just a match made in heaven right there. 
Yeah, I like that idea, but I also kind of like the idea of maybe him and Okada and Osprey kind of teaming up and being like, you know what? Yeah. We've been like the underdogs here this whole time. We're always been, we've never been at the big show, like, yeah. uh, you know, these big names like Austin and Michaels and everybody else. So why don't we team up right now and show these guys what we can do? Yeah, and I think even AJ is in the mix too with them. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Those four guys. Imagine like yeah. some sort of a some sort of a tag Alliance. match at Mania or something yeah. with those guys versus the top tiers of the WWE. Yeah, book it. Survivor Series next year. Let's do it. Yeah, hundred percent. I love it. And you know, like I feel like Kenny Omega is about to get his call for a challenge answered because as the buzz buzzer rather hits uh, number one. We are now all being privileged to listen to Pomp and Circumstance. Ladies and gentlemen, Randy, Macho Man Savage, is making his way down to the ring. There we go. We had Maddie Daddy on the program. He would give us an impression. So, yeah, this is awesome. This is something you've got you to gotta want. You know, number 26, Macho Man. Like you said, regarding Brock, like he's, he's fresh. Number 23 is fresh. Number 26, he's been sitting there for a long time. He's going at it. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like, you know, as you said, you got to want it. It's like Ico Pro. You got to want it. We have yeah. Randy Savage on his way out right now. And he is, uh, he is, he's just kind of flying around. I feel like he's not picking anybody in particular. You know, it's the macho madness, man. He's just going yeah. for it. And he's just kind of, he's just kind of yeah. floating around, hitting, taking shots where he can, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. And I think he's eyeing up some of the big guys too. You know, somebody like Brock, where you think, Holy shit, only if we could have seen that or somebody even, I mean, even like, uh, I mean, Will Ospreay or Randy, Randy would be really cool to see him and uh, Macho tear it down, you know? 100%. I'm right there with you. Uh, I mean, Randy, of course, he's he's doing his thing. He's doing the thing. Uh, yeah. And we are, uh, we are, we are coming down to the nitty gritty here of the Royal Rumble. Sure. So. What number, if I'm not mistaken, are we at number 26? 27. 27. Entrant number 27. As the bell rings, rather the buzzer rings, we are down to 27. Who do you have coming out next for me, man? Your tribal chief, the universal champion, Roman Reigns. And he's doing the usual. He's strutting down really slow. He's eyeing up the competition. He's looking at guys like Stone Cold. Can he just imagine? He's looking at guys like uh, Bret Hart. Again, could you imagine that? And he's he's making his way down, but he's slowly making his way down, waiting for the right time to jump in the ring and give somebody a super man punch. I like it. Yeah, I can. You know, you need to acknowledge your tribal chief, and I'm pretty sure that Randy go. Savage is trying to do it right now by you know hitting them with yeah. a couple of couple of double axes off the top rope yeah i can see roman reigns cleaning up right now giving a few superman punches throwing over evil doink you know throwing over somebody like Haku, somebody like okada somebody like will osprey i think he's cleaning up and he's you know lying down the competition and he sees guys like hit the hitman heart you see guys you see guys like brock and uh it's it's again we're just fantasy booking but it, this is uh this is really cool to do, man. Yeah, I'm having a blast, man. I'm really excited about the prospect of Reigns going in there and clearing house. Uh, yeah. You know, there's going to be some heavy hitters still in the match, obviously. He's not leaving it at empty ring. But, uh, you know, as all this is happening, that clock keeps on ticking, as we've talked about many times in this program. And I got to tell you, man, we got a pretty interesting entry yeah, coming do. up next. The buzzer strikes, and all we hear is, Viva la raza! Wait a minute. There's nobody coming out. Suddenly, Eddie Guerrero comes in from under the ring. He's been under there the whole time. And he go. starts throwing guys out. <laughs> yes, sir. Eddie, man, my favorite. All-time great. He's up there with uh, some of the really – I'll say it. Chris Benoit. He's, he's, he, those two are my favorite. Eddie is tearing down the house right now. And, of course, he's lying. He's cheating and he's stealing. Yeah, 100%. I'm seeing right now, I'm seeing Eddie maybe hitting some three amigos on maybe a, uh, maybe a Mr. Perfect. If Perfect's still in the mix, I feel like he is. Perfect's a workhorse. He's yeah. probably, uh, he's tired, but Kurt Hennig, he was a uh, he was a warrior, man. So to see Eddie and, and Kurt Hennig go at it, 
maybe see yeah. Bret Hart take a couple of uh, take a couple of those three amigos. You know what I mean? Like I've, maybe doing three yeah. amigos with three different guys might be fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I see Eddie eyeing up uh, Seth Rollins for some reason. I know their uh, skill sets may not be similar. I know they are, you know, sort of high flying, but I feel like they wouldn't be, you know, if, if Eddie was alive right now, I don't know if we would see something like that. Uh, again, we're fantasy booking, but I would love to see Eddie and, uh, you know, Danielson or Seth Rollins or pretty much anyone in the ring go one on one with Eddie. That's how much I miss him. Yeah, 100%. And uh, so I think that, you know, it's kind of like for like for you, like I miss Eddie as well. But I think yeah. for you in a way, like you losing Eddie was like the way I lost Owen. Like I just yeah. imagine because Owen was so unhappy with what was going on with, you know, the attitude era and stuff. But if you just yeah. fast forward, had he not passed away, you know, yeah. you look six or eight months into the future, he would have been able to work with Benoit, Guerrero, Saturn, Malenko, yeah. all those guys in the early 2000s. So, I mean, I would have yeah. loved to have seen Eddie and Owen go at it. That would have been a hell of a match. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would. Would have been uh, really cool to see. So if I'm not mistaken, entrant number 29 is on his way to the ring. This is your final entrant, and I'm yep. very curious to see as, as to how you're capping off your final yep. entrant in the Fantasy Royal Rumble as the clock strikes zero and the buzzer goes off. Yeah, he's a fan favorite. Do, 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 do. John Cena, number 29. Number 29, you got Cena, huh? Yes, sir. I like it. Oh, yeah. I can just imagine Cena and Vader going at it. Yeah, I was thinking more of uh, Macho Man and Cena. I just, for some reason, I feel like they would tear down the house. But yeah, Vader's looking at Cena. He's looking at Eddie, and he's like, oh, shit. Okay, the band's back together. Um, again, fantasy booking, but holy shit. Could you just imagine somebody like John Cena and even Jake the Snake or Shawn Michaels? Stone Cold, I mean, two of the greats. I know it's pretty early to call Cena a great, but I think he's up there. Um, it would just be um, really cool to see. Oh, I don't think it's early to call Cena great at all, man. I think that he's right up there. There's no doubt in my mind he'll go down as one of the greatest of all time. So makes a ton of sense for him to be in there. To be honest with you, I've been enjoying this match so much, I completely yeah. forgot about Cena that he wasn't even in it. So I'm happy that he's in there right now. He's probably hit yes, some five snuckle shuffle, some FUs or <laughs> AAs, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. So I guess it's time for that final entrant. And as that clock strikes, that buzzer goes off. We hear, yeah. we hear the world famous bone chilling gong. It is oh, your shit. own. It's your own instrument of destruction, The Undertaker. Taker is number 30, dude. He's the freshest one in the ring right now. He's tearing down the house. I dig it, man. I love Taker being number 30. Yeah, I love it, man. I think that this is a hell of a Royal Rumble. I got to be yeah. curious. I got to ask you, though, since we're doing this on the fly, I mean, yeah. who do you see as your final four? How do you see it going down? Who is winning this Royal Rumble? It's a tough one. It's a who's who of wrestlers yeah. in this match right now. Am I just picking two or four? You let me know. You pick two or four. You want to bring it down to the final two? Let's do the final two. 100%. Yeah, I mean, like, if it's the final four, do I get two guys and you get two guys? You're going to pick your final two or your final four. You're going to tell me how it goes, and then I'm going to do the same after you're done. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm going to go with, uh, it's it's got to be Cena. So I got Cena, uh, number one, and then I'm going to change it up a little. I'm going to have, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Huh, this is tough. This is tough. I know. But I got to do it. I got to do it. It's going to be Brock Lesnar. Nice. Going down at the number two, and they're just beating the hell out of each other. I mean, this feud goes as long as I can remember, back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, it's heating up. It's heating up, man. Who, what, do you, what do you got for number four? Who do you got for your last two? My final two, I mean, it's probably not going to be a big surprise to anyone that, uh, that, that knows me. But uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm not going to go with Taker because Taker is probably my all-around, all-time favorite. I think he's been eliminated. And I think Taker's actually been eliminated 
by, um, you know, one of these upstarts. I think maybe, or not an upstart, rather. I think maybe Taker's been eliminated by Sting. And maybe that's okay. going to work, work out into something a little bit down the road. Um, I'm going with my final two. I'm going with Bret Hart. And I'm going with, uh, I'm going with AJ Styles. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I dig it, man. I dig it. I didn't know that we could, so we could have picked anyone. So I'm sticking with my guys. I got Cena and Brock, but I'm digging those choices. AJ and uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. Yeah, 100%. And I feel like, you know, we're going to get a, I think we're going to get a heel turn. I think we're going to get AJ go over clean. He's going to throw Brett out. And then we're going to have That's Brett okay. go back to his 97 roots. And I think he's going to go back in. He's going to, you know, congratulate AJ for the win. And then when AJ turns around, Brett's going to knock his pins off. He's going to, he's going to beat him mercilessly, mercilessly with a chair on his knees. Yeah. And we go off the air with Brett applying a ruthless sharpshooter on, uh, on AJ. And, uh, nice. you know, that's the match going into Mania maybe is AJ and Brett. You know, we get the title on AJ at some point, or I don't know how we do it. But, yeah. but AJ, Brett, to me, that's the feud. And for you, I don't know who you have going over in your scenario, but I have yeah. a feeling it's going to be someone uh, maybe that is a, an, uh, an incarnate of some kind. Yeah, yeah. I got Brock winning this. And it's not going to be easy. I see him and Cena going, like I said, they're just tearing down the house. They're using everything beneath the ring, above the ring, uh, on the side, near the uh, – he's. they're using chairs. They're using everything. It's just one of those bloody matches, and that's how I would end the Rumble. I would see Brock, you know, a couple suplexes, a couple F5s, looking at Cena saying, you know what, you might be one of the best. You may have, you know, 16 championships, but I am here. I am hot. I'm ready to go, and he throws him over the rope, and Brock Lesnar – is your Rumble winner. I love it, man. I think that's a lot of fun. I think that, you know, Brock winning a Rumble, why not? He's done it once. Let's do it again. Um, yeah. You know what, man? I have to say, like, this was a concept that came together pretty quickly. We talked about this uh, earlier in the yep. week. It wasn't something, you know, it was an experiment. Neither one of us had done something like this before, especially with, like, having our lists kind of... Yeah. You know, folks, just, you know, we're not kayfabing you here. Neither Nick or I knew each other's list. So we were legitimately yeah. telling each other as we were recording here on, on air. So I think it yeah. went pretty well. I had a lot of fun doing this. Yeah, man. It's just, it's just fantasy booking, as much as people hate on it, it's so much fun to do because you get matches like this, you know, where Seth comes in at number seven. And then you got Mr. Perfect at number 10. You got Randy, Jake, Jericho. I mean, Shawn Michaels, I mean, the list can go on and on. These guys are legends, and it just it would be so much fun to just see this live, you know? 100%. So if you if you could do me a favor, Nick, you've got the list in front of me. Yep. Uh, do you have the list in front of you of every entrant, or should I go through it? No, I got it. You want me to do it? Yeah, man. Do it for us. All right. So number one is Rey Mysterio. Number two is Yokozuna. Number three is Brian Danielson. Number four is Owen Hart. Number five, it's Sting. Number six, Haku. Number seven, Seth frickin' Rollins. Number eight, Earthquake. Number nine, Will Ospreay. Number 10, Mr. Perfect. Number 11, RKO, Randy Orton. Number 12, Jake the Snake Roberts. Number 13, Jericho, Chris Jericho. Number 14, Evil Doink. Number 15, AJ Styles. Number 16, Shawn Michaels. 17, Adam Page. 18, what? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Number 19, Edge. Number 20, Bam Bam Bigelow. Number 21, Okada. Number 22, Brett, the Hitman Heart. Number 23, your winner, Brock Lesnar, number 24, Vader, number 25, Omega, number 26, Macho Man, number 27, Roman Reigns, number 28, Latino Heat, Eddie, 29 is Cena, and number 30 is The Undertaker. All right. Well, thank you very much for running that down, my friend. Um, you so got it. Pardon? No, yeah, of course. 
yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna throw this up onto Twitter. I think um, I think what we'll do is is once you've listened to this podcast, folks, head on over to the Good Friends Better Enemies podcast uh, page on Twitter, and I think we're gonna ask the question: Whose Rumble was better? Whose Rumble match was better? We had the final two of Nick being Cena and Lesnar, with Lesnar going over. And with the Good Friends, Better Enemies podcast, we had Bret Hart and AJ Styles with AJ going over, but a pretty vicious heel turn by Bret. I feel like they're both pretty good. we got some pretty good stuff going on here. Very different dynamics in terms of the two finishes. Very different performers in in terms of the two finishes. So I really, uh, yeah, I think this was a ton of fun. we got to do this again, man. Yeah, I mean, there's so many possibilities, too. Survivor Series, we could have done a women's rumble. That would be fun. I mean, yeah, fantasy booking is so much fun, and it's just it's fun to just, you know, talk some wrestling. 100%. I think we'll spitball about maybe doing something for Mania season. I wouldn't mind necessarily doing something like this, but, yeah. uh, you know, you do a card and I do a card, and then we figure out which one's better kind of thing. Might be a good good time. Yeah, We'll talk about it off air. But uh, I got to say, um, you know, man, I thank you so much for jumping on. You're our first guest of 2022. You've been a great guest for us ever since the fall. Uh, we're doing back-to-back shows with you and I, actually, because the last show we dropped was our Ric Flair episode that we recorded a while back. So it's nice. always a pleasure to have you on, and, and thank you so much. Can you hit us with your social media and tell us all about you and the Universal Wrestling Podcast? Inquiring minds want to know. Yes, sir. Thank you again, Jay. You can find us on uh, Twitter at the UW Pod and Instagram at UW Podcast. We do have a fancy website, uwpod.com. We'll be releasing a new episode very soon. I don't know when this is going to air, but it's going to air, or we're going to have a uh, an episode probably this uh, probably next week. So stay tuned. Your boy Jay is going to be on the episode as well as Maddie Daddy for Maddie Daddy Presents. It's a, it was a, so much fun, and uh, it's an honor to be on this podcast, my brother. Well, thank you very much. Yes, it was a lot of fun being on yours as well, and I got to tell you, uh, Matty Daddy popped me pretty pretty hard at the end of that that episode. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was a great time. We have a great working relationship, man. I'm happy to have you on. I'm happy to be on with you anytime. I am yeah. so stoked that we did this. I can't wait to drop it and get the responses. I'm sure people are going to love it. Um, yeah. For us here on the Good Friends, Better Enemies podcast. We actually are going to be going back into our card subject to change series for a little while. Not 100% sure what we're dropping next week, but uh, it's going to be Royal Rumble related, and it's probably going to be a rebooking. We're going to get back to our you know, meat and potatoes in terms of how we make our uh, podcast work and how our world turns with our multiverse that we're creating with WWE, WCW, and ECW. But uh, with that being said, folks, of course, you can catch us on Instagram at good double underscore enemies and on Twitter at good underscore enemies on the YouTube Counted Out 7 page as well as www.countedout7.com. And for myself, for Nick of the Universal Wrestling Podcast, for Tyrone, who was not able to make it this week, but we'll be back very shortly. And for the first ever Good Friends, Better Enemies Universal Wrestling Podcast joint venture of the Fantasy Royal Rumble match. The Good Friends Better Enemies Podcast. Thanks you very much.